live stream that are joining us tonight is Bible study and it's appropriate the topic we're using right now because the title of this series is how faith comes I'll say it again how faith comes part eight and if there's anyone who needs a lesson Pastor Lisa will come around and, and give you a lesson if you need one so you can follow but we can get this in together and I'll wait till everybody has one before I get started because I have something to say well God has something to say, amen? How many knows the Spirit of God is here? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And there's freedom when we allow the Holy Ghost to take residence, take up residence in the church. Chains are broken. Sickness is gone. Freedom comes in. Forgiveness takes place, amen? And we allow the Holy Ghost to have his way. How does faith come? Faith come by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can I get an amen? amen? Let me put this over here so that way I can, in case I got to jump out of my seat. <laughs> amen? Y'all know I get a little, how many of those prophets are preachers? Amen. Pastors are teachers. Prophets are teachers as well. I'm going to try to contain myself. Because I know some of y'all came with an expectancy today. So I'm on ready right now in case I got to get out of this little area over here. So how faith comes. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The way our faith is built up is that we have to get into the word of God in order for our faith to increase. Can I get an amen? amen. And you wonder, you start to ask God, okay, is there any other way that faith can increase in a Christian's life? Yes, and I'm glad you asked. 
The other way that your faith is built up in these last days in any stage of where you are in your Christianity as of right now. Doesn't matter if you're a baby Christian. Doesn't matter if you're a mature Christian. Doesn't matter if you're a teenage Christian. Whatever the case may be for your walk with God right now. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What does faith mean? It means I trust in what the word of God has spoken concerning my life. Well, I confess that I believe what God's word says until I'm hit with what? A trial. And when the trial hits, that is the fire that tests every metal that we have concerning our faith. Can I get an amen? amen. So you really don't understand or know how much faith you have until the trial hits you and where you live. That's where faith is pressure. That's where the trial of your faith is under the fire of the trial. Can I get an amen? And when the fire hits, you're going to see what comes out of you. You're going to see what takes place. You're going to see the reaction you have to whatever comes in your walk with God. So we're talking about how faith comes. One way is faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see that I'm surrounded with all these books, amen? And I'm going to give you a little crash course here. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That means that you've got to get into God's word so that you can understand your rights and privileges as a child of God. You understand? That means that, okay, I'm saved, but my salvation, that's as far as it goes. I understand what Jesus Christ has done for me on Calvary's cross. I understand the importance of the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary's cross for my sins. Amen. Amen. I understand the foundation which everything is built upon, which is Jesus Christ and him crucified. He is the chief cornerstone. You have to get that right. You have to recognize that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. That is the start of your foundation. Lord, I understand. And that is just so important, saints, is that you start to hear messages and you start to listen to some of what's coming behind the pulpit and out of the pulpit. You start to tune into more Christian stations and you start to listen to some praise and, and, and listen to some teachers. And you're wondering that with, with, the, with the end of what they're asking you is to come and receive Jesus Christ. But they haven't preached the cross and they haven't said anything concerning the sinful nature. So faith comes by hearing. Amen. And hearing by the word of God. Your faith cannot be in something until the word of God is presented. Can I get an amen? amen? So how are you supposed to encounter salvation when you don't know that you're wretched? When you don't know that you're undone? Amen. When you don't know the rockness of the body you live in? Amen. How many knows that we're not going to, this body is not going to inherit the kingdom of God? Woo! Come on now. This body must put off corruption. We must put off this corrupted body that's dying what? Daily, hourly, every second, our bodies decay. You know that the medical profession can't even um, uh, tell you scientifically why the body dies. They don't know why. I can tell you why. Sin. It's because of our sinful nature. As soon as we're born into the earth, do you know that your body is already dying? Because we have inherited our Adamic nature came from Adam and Eve. That's why every one of us, before we were saved, were bent on towards evil. Because we have a sinful nature. But if you don't preach this, faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, your faith doesn't gravitate to something. I have to understand what salvation is before I can start moving further in my rights and privileges. Hallelujah. And you have to understand your rights and privileges, or you won't even get to that place if you don't understand how to get sin out of your life. Sin was dealt with at the cross. Your sinful nature was dealt with at the cross. Sin was paid for at the cross. Your sinful nature and the power it had over you was broken on Calvary's cross. Can I get an amen? That's the good news. That's the gospel. But if you don't present the gospel, guess what? You don't know that you're in need of what? A savior. We need saving from the judgment and the wrath that is coming upon the earth in these last days. But guess what? We're saved. Yeah. We're set apart. Yeah. 
we're sanctified, we're justified, just as if we've never sinned. You got to know who you are in God. You got to know your identity in God. Lord, I may have missed it today, or I may have blown it yesterday, but I have covenant relationship with you, and I come not on my merit, but I come on the merit of what Jesus Christ has done 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross when he shed his blood. It was for the remission of my sins, for the forgiveness of my sins. And Lord, I, 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 I want to be able to walk in certain rights and privileges and blessings, but wait a minute, there's something that's blocking me from getting to you and it's called sin sin what breaks fellowship with god and you have to know how to come to god don't allow sin to keep you away from god you got to know what your rights and your privileges lord i had messed up yesterday oh boy i looked at something i shouldn't have looked at i tasted something i shouldn't have tasted i had a little bit of a flesh day but lord i'm still here and i know i can come through the blood i know i can be washed I know I can be forgiven again. I know I can start all over. Uh, yeah, y'all want to this? Y'all want me to get yeah, to read? Y'all can read. Y'all want me to read? And yeah, we can go back to reading. But some of y'all need some of this right now. Because faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And I, I, I myself, when I got saved, couldn't wait for Wednesday and Sunday to get to church to see what God had to say to me. I got into the word of God outside of the church so that I can start to discover the blessings and the promises he has for me. So when a trial hits your life, you have what the Bible says you have. How does faith come? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have to have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ for yourself. Each man walk out his own salvation with trembling and fear. I can't walk your walk and you can't walk my walk. If there's anything, any weight coming upon you at this moment in your life, get into the Word of God. Get into the Bible. Get into His presence and start seeking the Lord. This is the hour, saints, that we need to seek Him more than ever. And the trial isn't just out there. It's right here in our church, right at our front doors. And the Lord's saying, what are you going to do? Are you going to shrink back? Are you going to backslide? Are you going to stop believing in me? I am the great I am. I am the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He will show up and he will deliver you out of every situation because that's our rights and our privileges. But we can't just stop at salvation. We have to go after everything. We have to show ourselves approved unto God. We have to study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman that what? Need not be ashamed who knows how to rightly divide the word of truth. Can I get an amen? Amen. How does faith come? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the Y'all going to know that like yes. nobody's yes. business. Yes. Faith come by hearing and hearing. Gonna, it's going to start ringing in your ear. Yes. Pastor said, faith come come by hearing. Faith come here. Hearing the word of God. Hearing the word of God. I got to get into the word of God. Yes. Lord, I don't have any answers. I, I got too many questions. The Lord said, get into the word of God. Get into everything you need is in the word. Amen. Go find it. Go after it. Get it and claim it and walk in it. That's what we're talking about today. Come on now, for tonight. So if you got your lesson plan, we're talking about how faith comes. And this is part eight for those who are taking notes or watching or writing notes. And now we're looking at the top of your page and you see the scripture up there. It says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is not based upon senses, which yield uncertainty, but rather on the word of God. I cannot, I cannot even get off that scripture. I'm going to say it again. Now, faith is what the substance of things hope for. The evidence of things not yet seen. You're hoping for something, but it hasn't yet materialized in your life. Whatever the case may be, finances, you're, you're, you're looking for a husband, Amen. you're looking for a wife, hallelujah, you're looking for children, I mean, Lord, I, I, I'm looking for healing, I need a healing in my body, but it's not showing up, Lord, but I'm going to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. This is the very definition of what faith is. Faith is the substance, the reality of what I cannot see just yet. The word of God says, I have it, but I don't yet see it. 
But I'm going to continue to walk this thing out in faith, trusting God. Because as soon as you step out the boat, that's when the trial hits. I told y'all I was going to get off that platform. <laughs> as soon as you come out of the boat, you got your eyes on Christ. You here in the church tonight are believing God for some big things. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Sisters believe for a husband. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Amen? Yeah. The Bible says whatever your heart desires, that's what her heart desires. Amen. And God said it's not good for man to what? Alone. Be alone. And when man finds a wife, what? He finds a good thing. Amen. And obtains yes. favor from the Lord. That means that there's a significant other sitting next to you. Doesn't mean you don't have favor. It could be God's timing. That's another thing I'm going to get to in a minute concerning faith. It means that I found a good thing and you obtained favor. And when God sends somebody, guess what? He sends the best. Amen. Because you waited for his timing. Do you know faith without works is what? Faith without works is dead. How does the working look like? The working is, I, I, I see the world is upside down right now. Work says, I'm going to get up out of bed, and I'm going to continue to go where you know I need to go, and I'm walking in faith and not by sight, even though I see everything that's going on in the world right now. Politics, everything is upside down with the coronavirus. Lord, I'm going to continue like Peter, when Peter stepped out of the boat, the storm started rising up. What are the storms are designed for? What are the trials designed for? To take your eyes off of Christ. The storms that come into your life, whether they're permitted, whether they're designed by God for the testing of your faith, or whether the enemy is trying to knock you down, you keep your eyes on the one who has the answer. And this, uh, this is the kind of Lord we serve. Amen. That even when you're walking towards him, I can sense God say, look, he, they're coming after me. Oh, they're coming after me. Amen. And because we are still in this flesh and blood, we're still frail. And I remind God of that every day. Lord, I remind you and I put you in remembrance that I'm still flesh and blood. I'm still in this body. And I'm going to mess up. And I'm going to miss it here and there. Thank God for mercy and grace that came by the way of Jesus. There is therefore what? Now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh. What? But after the spirit. You're no longer trying to fulfill this thing in your flesh. You're doing it by the power of God's spirit. By keeping your eyes focused on Jesus. But that when you start looking to the side, oh, this came in. Your faith got a little weak, right? This over here came in. Your faith got a little more fragile there for, the, for a moment. That's what the trials are designed to do, to bring that stuff out of you and to purify your faith so that it becomes stronger in the end. Hallelujah. That even when you begin to sink, what is it that Christ does? He reaches down and he pulls you out. Because you recognize, Lord, my faith, fear came in, doubt, unbelief. I started murmuring. I started getting angry. I started getting bitter towards God. But the Lord said, grace and mercy came by the way of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That even when I start to miss it, even when I start to sink, I reach out and say, Lord, forgive me, Lord. And he's right there. He doesn't let you sink. He doesn't let you drown. He doesn't let you uh, just kind of, let's see, let's see if they come out. We'll see what they got. He doesn't do that. That's not the kind of God we serve. As soon as your heart reaches out to the Lord, he's right there to pull you up and pull you out. Amen. And he'll walk with you the rest of the way. Amen. But we have to continue with faith and not by sight to walk after the Lord. Can I get an amen? How does faith come? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But now... But now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things what not yet seen. Lord, I don't see it, but I believe it. Amen. And I believe it, I receive it. And I'm going to walk in what I have already, not knowing that I, I don't see it, but I already have it. Can I get an amen? amen. That's faith. That's the definition.
definition of faith. Oh, Lord, that's just, that's hard to walk in because I got to see it before I believe it. Well, she's believing for something. Don't sit on her husband. I've already told you, your husband's sitting right there. Don't sit on her husband. Do you know how many times Pastor Delisa believed that the glory was going to show up? Man, listen up a little bit. I told you, when God sends somebody, he sends the best. Come on now. He doesn't. Now the devil will sing your junk. Hallelujah. And you'll know when the junk shows up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I want the, I want the, 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 the biceps and the, the quads and the chest. And that's the kind. Of, leave all that alone. Lord, you know what I want? I want what you have for me. I want a God-fearing woman. I got one. I, I, I want a God-fearing man. One who loves you, Lord. That'll be faithful to me. That'll be faithful to her. Can I get an amen? amen? If that one hasn't come yet, God may still be working on that individual amen. before they get to where they need to be because of where you are. Amen. And thank God. And I told you before, faith without works is dead. Amen. As you're walking in faith, you may not see the manifestation. Now, this is the hardest thing to do, saints. I'm going to tell you right now. This is the hardest part of your walk with God is that you're believing God for something, whether it's healing, finances, Whatever the case may be, husband, wife, whatever, job, uh, great boss, get rid of my boss. Oh, God doesn't do that. <laughs> he may keep you there. <laughs> but I'm saying that as you're waiting, that's faith. Lord, I don't see what you have for me. Though the word of God says that it's there, that's your promise. I have your promise. But, Lord, there's a whole lot of walking it out before I get to my land of Goshen. Before I get to the land of Canaan, I got to walk some things out because God may very well be doing something in you that you know not of. Amen. Because we're not as wonderful as we think we are <laughs> until a trial hits, right? And then you're over there apologizing and repenting before your wife. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And it's genuine. And if you got to do it a hundred times, you do it a hundred times. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Y'all on top of y'all's page? Amen. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is not based upon what? Our senses, which yield uncertainty, but rather on the word of God. That means that this right here, this right here, well, you know, I'm just going to follow my heart. Whatever my heart tells me. I'm going to follow my heart because... My heart tells me, no, 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 no. The Bible says the heart is what? Desperately wicked. And who knows how wicked it truly is. We don't base anything we do on our senses, on how we feel, emotionally, physically, or financially. I'm not going to serve God when my circumstances get better. I'm going to serve God now in the midst of my trial because God is doing something right now with the church of the living God. Judgment first begins where? In the house of God. Amen. God is getting his church in order right now. Amen. And I had a sister uh, ask me about a month and a half ago. Uh, she said, well, what's the difference? This is great because Sister Norma has great questions when she comes and asks me certain things. You don't mind me saying this, but she says, what's the difference that every pastor you hear right now, the sense and the tone of what they're speaking in the spirit has to do with the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because his return is soon. How many know that? Amen. And in the last days, we're going to discern the signs of the times of what's taking place right now. And she asked me, what's the difference that what happened in World War II? Wouldn't you think that they thought maybe at that time with all the war that was going on, they may have sensed that the return and the rapture is upon us. Hallelujah. What's the difference from that time frame and the prophetic uh, time of where we are now that what's going on in the earth, that Jesus Christ can return at any moment? The thing you can discern is that sin is running rampant across the world right now. And that is being glorified and it's being shouted from the rooftop. And now we're seeing certain places that are rejecting the gospel because it's on the rise and we just heard in Canada in Canada it is, it is against the law for me to come up to you and preach the gospel 
That's what they're trying to bring here to the States. And God's not going to allow it as long as we're here. Amen. But if you so choose to tarry, and we have to go through something like that, do you know that God's grace will be there for whatever he chooses the Christian to go through, and you never have to worry about that? Amen. And I'm afraid that us being Americans, we live so comfortably sometimes, amen? And we're wondering, okay, all of our life we've gone through certain trials, and we've had some ups and downs, and no doubt we've had some heartache come into our lives from many of the trials that we must face before entering into heaven. But the trial that's upon us right now is nothing like we've experienced before because it's been one after the other where we're not even able to breathe right now. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? It's trial upon trial upon trial. Amen. And what did Peter say? Peter said, if need be, you're in a season of manifold temptations through heaviness that's come upon the church right now. Yeah. Well, but it's for a season. Because God is doing something right now. And I was talking to my uh, my brother in San Antonio. He's a pastor out in San Antonio. And I just love talking to my brother. And uh, he says, through all of this that's taking place, there is a sifting that's happening with the church. Those that have played church, you're going to start to see them draw back into the world. And those who truly are the church, they're going to stay connected to the vine. And they're going to keep moving forward. And there's going to be a stirring and some of y'all's spirit to start witnessing, evangelizing, telling people, do you know Jesus Christ? Do you have him as your Lord and your Savior? The church is starting to rise up, and I'm talking about the true church of the living God. And the anointing and the power of God's spirit is breaking chains in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Now I want you to go to your paper. And I want you to see if you can go down to where it says, of course. On the first page, it says, of course, if I had gone by my feelings. Do you see that? Yes. Let's, let's start right there. And I want to read a few of these things before we get into praying for everybody. It says, of course, if I had gone by my feelings, he's telling a story. I would never have gotten out of bed because I felt like staying in bed. <laughs> I never felt so weak in my life. I felt like I couldn't do anything. You ever felt like that before? Amen. Come on, man. <laughs> let, a, let alone a strenuous job like that, but just I just stayed with it. I acted upon the word because I knew what faith is. Now, this is a story that came from our Bible college, and this is Kenneth Hagin talking about faith. He was a young man, and he was deathly ill, and as he got sick, he was sick for almost six weeks, and the doctors already had deemed him that he was going to die. But Kenneth Hagin, as a young man, he started to get into the Word of God, and he started, to, he started to see the healing scriptures. How many knows healing is for the body of Christ? That's part of our covenant. That's part of your what? Rights and privileges. That's why you've got to know the Word of God, saints. So that you understand the promises and the blessings that God has for you. I never said that uh, you're immune from anything in the earth. We're in this body. The one thing the devil, the world, cannot touch is what? Your soul. Amen. Your soul belongs to God. Amen. We're just passing through this life. Amen. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And here Kenneth Hagin is saying, I was so sick. I was so tired. But each time I got out of bed, I believe what God's word says. The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I fear? Each time you step out of bed, each time you start brushing your teeth, Lord, I got to go back to that job. Oh, my gosh. This, it's crazy. It's like, it's like a war zone right now in some of y'all's places. Can I get an amen? amen? It's like a war zone. You're fit. Boy, you got to have faith to walk into an environment like that. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> you have to have faith. And full trust in what God has spoken about your situation. Lord, you said, Lord, that you would protect me. Lord, you said your angels were given charge over me to keep me in the way. Lord, you said you were, you were wounded for my transgressions. You were bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement 
what Jesus took at the whipping post, the chastisement he took was for our peace with God. Do you understand that? And by his stripes, the stripes he received, you and I are healed. We're healed by the stripes of Jesus. Lord, I'm healed by your stripes. Lord, you said, even though I feel a little something, I know something's trying. Lord, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm not done. I got, I got work to do here. I yearn to go be with my Lord. The Apostle Paul said, I, I am betwixt between two desires, one to go be with my Lord and one to stay here. Why was the Apostle desiring to stay here? Because he loved God's people. Amen. He knows if I remain here, if Pastor and I remain here, it means more fruitful service yes. unto you. Yes. That means that we get to impart more into your yes. lives Amen. so that we can see the fruit come forth. Yes. Oh, but far greater for me to go and be with my Lord. Because if I go, that means you're going with us. Hallelujah. And we're out of here. And the rapture's already taking place. Yes. So we got to be able to walk these things out in faith. That Lord, I know as soon as I get up that I gotta confess that the Lord is my strength. The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I fear? Each time you start walking, you walk through those doors, it's gonna be like a supernatural thing happens in your life. Sister Angela, the Lord told me, Sister Angela, I hear the Holy Ghost speaking to me right now. I just see you in that environment. And the Lord says, each time, sister, you go through those doors, there is going to be a supernatural strength that just comes upon you. Amen. The anointing and the presence and the spirit of God is going to fall upon you. Amen. And what that's going to bring, the Lord shows me, sister, such a peace. Amen. It's going to be a peace, Lord. You got me, Lord. You got me, Lord. And it's going to guard your heart. And it's going to guard your mind. In Christ Jesus. That when the enemy starts throwing those fiery darts, sister, at your mind, the Lord says, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. Amen. And he says, everything's going to be all right. You're going from there and into your family's home. And that's the word to you by the Holy Ghost, sister. <laughs> Come on now. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's keep going. It says, so I would say to the Father, to Jesus, to the Holy Ghost, to the devil, to myself, and to those boys if they ask me, whoever's asking you, I don't know how you do this. You simply say, the Lord is my strength. It's not me. It's the Lord is my strength. Then after I prayed, I asked God for his strength, and I confessed that I what? that I had it. Woo! He goes, I would never get any help or strength until I actually started to what? To work. You see, it wasn't enough to have faith. I had to act on my faith. He was declaring even before he had it that he already had it because he didn't operate off of his senses. Lord, I can't go by what this carnal mind is what? It's enmity against God. This right here hasn't been fully redeemed. You understand that? Amen. So it does funny things up here because the mind is the battlefield. Amen. And so we need to renew our mind, a right mind through what? Through the washing and the watering of God's word daily. Yes. Lord, I need to be washed daily yes. through your word because unbelief is trying to plague me. Yes. Fear is trying to plague me. Doubt is trying to creep up on me. And I got to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ Jesus. I got to cast down every vain imagination that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. For I know it's true. And I start to meditate upon those things that God has said over my life. Whether it's a marriage mm, that you hope who are married today in a relationship. Lord, I know what your word says. And I know what you said about my marriage. And devil, you take your hands off of my marriage. You get out in Jesus' name. Start taking authority over what's trying to come into your place of living. What did Joshua, what did God tell Joshua? We're almost there. 
He told Joshua he was about to go in and occupy the land of Canaan. When the spies got sent out, they went to scout out the, the land. They came back and said, it's too much. There's too many giants in the land. We can't go in. There was 12 spies that went out to scout the land. Ten of them came back and started saying, we can't take, there's too many giants in the land. We're not strong enough. We look like grasshoppers. In their, in their sight, we look like grasshoppers. Joshua and Caleb are telling these men to stop bringing this into the congregation. Stop bringing this into the camp. You got to keep fear out of the camp, saints. You got to keep fear out of your family. And you got to reassure your family who God is Amen. and the kind Amen. of God we serve. Amen. And God told Joshua, Amen. because we have two that believed. Yes. And to who, who, do you, who do you remember that actually entered into the promised land? Caleb and Joshua. Amen. Three million Israelites came out of Egypt and all of them died. They could not go into the promised land because of fear, doubt, and unbelief. This is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to paralyze your faith to where you feel frozen. You feel helpless. Depression starts to come in. Stress comes in. And you have to confess that he told Joshua that when you put your foot on the soil, the soil, the land belongs to you. Amen. Spiritually speaking, do you understand what that means? That means your home, where you work, where you place your feet belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Either you believe it or you don't. The enemy shall come in one way, but he has to flee seven different ways. That's my covenant relationship with God. And I'm going to finish with this scripture. And I want you to go with me there. And we're going to start because the Lord wants to shut this down and start praying for his people. I want you to go to Mark. If you have your Bibles today. I had a whole bunch of notes here. You see all the Bibles. I was going to go through each Bible. Tell you what a concordance is. And tell you what the commentaries are for. And read out of the Lord said I had a whole different agenda for you. And I fasted all, I fasted all day for the body of Christ. Amen. Just for you lovely people here. I love God's people. Love every one of you. I have a burden, constant burden for every one of you. And my wife and I, Pastor and I, we pray fervently, daily, for each and every one of you. Even uh, your little friend over there, brother, we're praying for him. <laughs> his dog, his little dog is not doing well. Y'all keep him praying. I mean, it's like a family member. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Okay, Mark eleven twenty four. Are we there? And I, I want you to see some of uh, your rights and privileges as a child of God. Hallelujah. We've been redeemed, saints. Amen. He says, I tell you, you can pray for what? Anything. anything. Some things? No. Anything. And if you what? Believe that you receive it. It will be yours. I want to read out of the King James, and I want you to just listen. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire. When you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now go to verse 25. We're going to finish with this. He says, but when you are praying, uh-oh, he says, first forgive anyone. You're holding a grudge that's unforgiveness against, so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. So you see like, okay, Lord, I'm trying. It, it, it's, it's almost like you're at the campfire and you got the stick and you got the, you're trying to rub, you're trying to get the fire going and nothing's happening. You're like, Lord, I'm throwing rocks. I'm, I put the lighter fluid. I, I throw a match and there's no fire coming on. Nothing's happening right now. And you start to understand, Lord, I got to make sure to take spiritual inventory of my walk with you to, to make sure that I'm in right standing with you. That my heart is right with God. So that these rights and privileges I have access to. That these are some of the things that can bar heaven 
the windows will be closed off from you. If you have any, this is how serious God takes unforgiveness. Sin breaks fellowship. Sin will shut the heavens down from the blessings coming. Well, I, 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 if I miss it, that means the heavens are closed up. No, 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 no. It's when the Lord, when God is striving with you and he's wrestling with you and you're doing this, whatever, whatever area that you're in with your walk with God, yield and humble yourself before the throne of God and say, Lord, I clear out and I clean out. I have no hidden parts in my house, but you have full access to every area in my life. And the Lord will start to convict. He'll start to deal with you. He'll start to call you to get rid of things. Because God wants to do something. Now that comes to where I'm trying to get the mountain to move. I'm casting the mountain and I'm commanding it to be that removed. And it's supposed to move. Okay, Lord, this mountain is not moving. Am I in error anywhere? He says, no. You're in right standings and you're in my perfect will. There is the waiting part now that comes along walking in faith. The Lord says, okay, keep walking this thing out with me and watch me move on your behalf. Amen. How does faith come? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God, part eight. Everybody stand. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I felt y'all's faith come alive tonight. We serve a good God. The Lord says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But I'll be with you always, even to the end of this age. And the hour we're living in, as a body of believers, the church of the living God, the hour is late. And Jesus Christ is soon to return. And he's drawing his people into his presence. And you can sense that something is happening. Not so much with the world. The world is going crazy. But God is doing something with his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. We just praise you and we glorify your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, the anointing, and the spirit of the living God. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that destroys every yoke, Father. Hallelujah. If there's anyone that needs prayer, Lord, I just need a touch. I heard what the pastor spoke tonight. And I receive every word. But I just need a touch from the master. I need an infilling of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. A refreshing in your spirit. Hallelujah. The Lord said, if that's you, come. And you can line up. Get as close as you can to, this, to, the, to the altar. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are the church of the living God. We are the called out ones. That's what Ecclesiastes means. It means the called out ones. And when you come to church, we have to have a different mindset of what church is. Church is the body of Christ. I'm coming to be with my family. Yes. I'm coming to be with the body of believers. Yes. Hallelujah. Right where you are, I'm not going to lay hands, just right where you are right there. God's just going to drop his spirit on every one of you. And you're going to start to sense something happening. You're going to start to sense a refreshing coming over your spirit. 
And the Lord says some of your faith is going to be reactivated and re-energized to do what he's called you to do. To go back into the war zone. Hallelujah. Hey, that could be just the grocery store now. I'm telling you, it's getting crazy out there. We got to hold on to the Lord. Amen. He's got the answers. Hallelujah. Father, right now, hallelujah. Every eye closed. Just you and the Lord. Father, right now, pour out your spirit. Saturate them from head to toe, Father, and fill them to an overflow. Touch them where they hurt, Lord. Minister and bless your people as you open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so great they won't have room enough to take it in, Father. Let them see your goodness. Let them see, Father, and experience your love. Increase every area right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. You've kept us thus far, and you shall keep us the rest of the way. I thank you, Lord, it's done. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I speak peace. Peace over each household in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord said, go thy way and be at peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give him a shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How many knows what time it is? Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. That was, <laughs> that was perfect. That was so perfect. Thank you. Proverbs this is one of my, this is like one of my favorites. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. What's your understanding? This is my understanding. Uh, right before Christmas, all this stuff started happening. My husband's got hurt. We got lots of bills. Uh, we help family members, so I'm gonna go find, find a job. The first one that comes along, as long as I'm off on Wednesdays and Sundays, I'm good. Because <laughs> I'm older now, and so I might have to take any job. I gotta fix this myself, okay? Uh, I'll do my part, God will meet me wherever I'm at, blah, blah, blah. That's not depending. That's depending on my own understanding, right? But then, verse six says, we seek his will in all we do. Uh-oh, <laughs> I'm looking for God's will now. So I live in God's economy, not the world's economy. Amen. God has already supplied all my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. So I trust him with my finances and I'm faithful to give my 10% and above that to sow seed into his kingdom. He is pleased with me and I trust him to take care of me. So what is his will? In all we do, we seek his will in all we do and he will show us which path to take. So he's gonna show us which path to take. He's gonna guide us, he's gonna lead us by the Holy Spirit. He's that still small voice in our spirit. And when we are praying about which way to go, he will give us peace. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Woo. So if you are writing a check, make it payable to the hand of God ministry. <laughs> if you're giving cash, you can use the envelope in front of you. If you'd like to use a debit card, you can use, you can step outside after the service and um, next to the terminal, next to the bookshelf. 
you're sowing seed towards a building fund, please make a note of that. Um, if you joined us online and you'd like to donate, go to our website, thehandofgodministry.com, hit the donate tab. So if you have them ready, come and bless the Lord. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> I gotta, keep, I gotta keep practicing. <laughs> oh, sad ones don't like to practice. <laughs> but every time I'm up here, I realize it's my chip texture. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So if you will stretch your hands, Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you for supplying all of our needs. Father, your word says that you know what we need even before we ask. Yes. Your word says, Father, that you take care of the birds of the air, the lilies of the field, and you even count the hair on our head. So we know, Father, that we are already taken care of, and we just thank you for that. We thank you that you are Abba Father. You are our Father, and you care for us like a father, like a dear, dear father. We just thank you for that, Lord. We just lift up this offering to you, Father, that it be a sweet-smelling sacrifice. And we just thank you, Father God, that you have already taken it and you have already designed a plan for it, Father God, to return it to us, Father God, a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, everyone said amen. amen. And now for a few announcements. No. I'm so sorry, Pastor. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> we would like to thank everyone for joining us. If you're visiting us for the first time, please stop by the Welcome Center. Leave a Connect card with us. You can also friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And Super Kids, don't forget to stop by the children's room after service for your kingdom stickers. So we will be back here Sunday at 1030 for more church. Come early, join us in the social for some coffee from 945 to 1025. Is there anything else? I'll say one more thing. Oh, okay. okay. Um, opportunities to volunteer and serve. For those of you that filled out forms, Pastor Jesse and I will be working on some things this coming week. So um, as we see the forms come in, we're like very excited. So uh, we will be connecting with you guys. Give us within a week. Um, we're going to get some things in order. But we, might, we haven't forgotten, so we just want to thank you for those of you who offered to volunteer and serve. And we're looking forward to working with you in the near future. So, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So if you will stand to be dismissed. Thank you, Lord. We just honor you, Father. We honor you, Father, with our presence. We push through, Father. We just thank you, Father, for the the shot of faith that you gave us tonight father yes. we just thank you lord that everything that we learn tonight father will stay with us father that our hearts our souls our spirit is is a uh, fertile ground father god that those, those seeds lord will take root father god that we will remember lord god that we just have to have the the uh, faith of a mustard seed and we have way more than that so we know father that we are blessed. We know what our rights and our privileges are in Christ Jesus. And we thank you for that, Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, everyone said, Amen. 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 You may be dismissed. Tell someone you love.